All right, now here I have got a five generation old Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and I have got the Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is the latest flagship phone from Samsung. And in this video, we are going to try and understand how much of a difference it is going to make when it comes to using a latest flagship phone with a five generation old flagship phone. We will do a quick speed test between these two devices and see whether there is any significant difference between these two devices. And this will also answer some of you folks who are wondering whether Samsung's phones are going to slow down after a few years of use. Usage. So two things we are going to check. One is we are going to do a speed test and see whether there is any significant difference between these two devices. And I will also answer you whether the Samsung Galaxy phone slow down after a couple of years, whether it starts hanging or stuttering and in terms of animations, how good it is when you compare these two phones, which are five generation difference. Let's go ahead. Now this Galaxy Note 9 was launched in the year 2018 August. This is currently running on One UI 2.5 based on Android 10. And this rocks Exynos 9810 processor Processor, which is a 10 nanometer chip and this phone here has just 6 GB of RAM. This was the best phone Samsung ever made at least until 2018. Now coming to the S23 Ultra, this is the latest flagship from Samsung launched in 2023 February. This rocks a latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 which is a 4 nanometer chip and the variant I have here is a 12 GB RAM variant. Now in terms of specifications, there is a significant difference and I'm sure most of us are going to think that this is going to make a lot of difference in day to day life. Let's find out. Let's do a quick speed test between these two phones. Let's open some applications which we use more often in our day to day life and see what is the kind of difference we are going to see in opening these applications and in RAM management. Let's boot up the device at the same time. As you can see, both of them are showing the Samsung logo right here. And apparently Samsung Note 9 seems to have turned on first and it is asking me to unlock the phone. However, the S23 Ultra took a couple of more seconds to show the lock screen. At the end, S23 Ultra managed to open the phone. However, the difference here is about 10 to 15 seconds, which I'm sure not many of us would be bothered about. Now let's make sure both the phones are on same Wi-Fi network. Now let's go to settings and open the device care or the battery settings. Here let me tap on memory and clear the data here. As you can see, we are comparing the Note 9 with 6 GB RAM and the S23 Ultra with 12 GB RAM. Not the right comparison, but let's find out how it's going to go. Let's make sure all the recent applications are closed. Now let's begin with some system applications. The phone app, there is a slight delay on the Note 9. Now the calculator, almost at the same time. Now the messaging application, both opens at the same time. Now the internet, there is a slight lag on the Note 9. Camera application, again almost at the same time, but there is a slight delay on the Note 9, which is not much noticeable. Now Instagram, as you can see, again, there is a very slight delay here on Note 9. The YouTube, almost at the same time. Samsung Notes application, pretty close. Now Twitter, again, uh, hardly any difference there. Spotify, there is definitely slight delay there. Uh, let's open Play Store. It opened at the same time. Now the Galaxy Store, Again, a slight delay on the Note 9. Calendar, perfectly synced. Gmail, hardly any delay there. Reminder, opened at the same time. Now let's open Amazon application. Here there is a slight delay in opening this application on Note 9. Now let's open a couple of games. Let's first open Subway Surfer. It quickly opened up on the S23 Ultra. It took about 5 to 8 seconds extra on the Note 9. Now let's open the Call of Duty, which is a huge game. Instantly you can see that there was a delay in response as well while opening this application on the Note 9. On the S23 Ultra, it is already open and it's taking time on the Note 9. Hot 
and here it is on the Note 9. So again, there is a difference of a few seconds here, but these differences in opening the applications in day-to-day -day life is not very significant. A five generation old Note 9 versus the Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is the latest device. And there was hardly any differences in opening these applications between these two devices. Now, if you look at the RAM management here, both the phones managed it pretty well. Note 9 with 6 GB of RAM still managed to hold all these applications in the background. There were just a couple of instances where the app refreshed when we opened it from the recent application. But hey, there was no significant difference here again in the RAM management, despite the this Note 9 having just a 6 GB RAM, it compared pretty well with the latest phone. Now this demonstrates how Samsung has evolved over a period of time. Since the Note 8 or since Note 9, the phones have been performing really well even after a few years of usage. This is not applicable just for the top of the line Samsung Galaxy phones. This is also applicable for the regular S series phones. Since we are comparing only the flagships here, I can say that the flagship even after five years is performing really, really well. Now, when it comes to the transitions and animations, of course, it depends on the version of One UI the phone is running on. Even though this is on One UI 2.5, the animation is pretty good here. And I'm not actually doing the justice because this is a 60 Hertz display on the Note 9 and on the S23 Ultra, it's 120 Hertz. And if it was 60 Hertz on the S23 Ultra, the transitions and animations would have looked almost the same. It is still buttery smooth, but here and there, we can see some lags and stutters on the Note 9 occasionally, but that is something which we can expect on a device which is so old. As you can see, the rest of the operations run pretty smoothly, but there is one area where we can see that the phone is not up to the mark, is the touch response. As you can see in the settings, whenever I try to open a particular setting, there is a lag, there is a delay in responding to the touch. It takes a few milliseconds to respond to the touch. That is something noticeable here on the Note 9, but otherwise, for normal usage, this phone is pretty capable even today. There are many people who talk negatively about Samsung saying that Samsung phones lag after a few years. And this demonstration shows that Samsung has improved a lot and this is not the Samsung which used to be many years ago with the TouchWiz UI. Now, since the One UI launch, Samsung's flagship phones have been doing pretty well. Once you buy a Samsung flagship phone, you will be able to use it for nothing less than four to five years time. But you may be wondering whether this is applicable for the Samsung's mid-ranges or the lower end devices as well. That is something I'm skeptical about. Perhaps the A series would last longer, but the lower end Samsung phones, I always have an issue in terms of lags and stutters, and there are possible is that after a couple of years, those phones might start lagging. But when it comes to flagship phones or at least the A-series devices should do well for a longer period of time. This is something which I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what do you think? What is your experience with Samsung Galaxy phones so far? Whether you still own this beast, the Galaxy Note 9, drop a comment and do share your thoughts about this comparison. And let me know what do you think about this particular video, drop a comment and when you do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel and become a part of Apex community to know your phone better. And do hit the like button as well for this video if you find it informational. Thanks for watching. My name is Salian signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.